There we go. Yeah, yeah I, I had been, um, okay. Hey, everybody who's just joining us. We, me, okay, so we're late, like actually just getting started, started. I wanted to have this conversation with you because me and Cynthia have a Telegram channel that we started for the podcast. It's called the American States Assembly American States Assemblies. I was trying yeah, to remember. It's on Telegram. It's on Telegram. The in my mind, I'm following it, but you might be. I think she said you are, and I don't know because Cynthia does this like this is her jam, and so she kind of runs it. Um, I don't. I'm learning about Telegram from her. I didn't know you could do all this stuff on Telegram because, frankly, to me, Telegram looks like WhatsApp. And, yeah. and it's like, you have to kind of keep up with it. And I just don't have energy for it. But <clears throat> what I like about it, there you are. Do you see it? Yes, I do. Oh, I thought I was on here, but it says to join. So I'm going to click join. Is that all right? <laughs> yeah. No, we want you to join it. The reason I was actually, what I would like, I wanted to find out from you if you're interested. I I think it's important that we show some uh, unity and organization and cooperation in the leadership, because all anybody's ever seen is Anna and then Terry mm -hmm. and then Anna and then Terry, and that's it. And, you know, that isn't obviously just working. There's something happening. There's a veil and we're a hundred percent transparent. There's no secret society, no secret rooms. You don't need to be my bestie. I don't need to like you very much or whatever, because, you know, we're all supposed to just be able to participate and we have to just be able to respect and honor each other. And as long as you're just being honorable, it's fine. And if you're not being honorable, we're just going to be like, yo, like, this is not what we're doing right now. This is not okay. Yeah. And we're, we're, we're wanting everyone to get together and practice talking in honor with each other, like actually. Mm -hmm. And I think the only thing that anybody wants is relief. Yeah. And the only way they're going to get it, because thank you very much for the recording. I was so mad. I couldn't get in that day. I was like waiting for the Thursday night class. And I was like, okay, how do I get there? What's going on? And I literally spent the whole evening trying to figure it out. I was like kind of exhausted. And I said, Cynthia, what's up? Like, where is it? And, mm -hmm. and she's like, there's a bunch of people. And I was like, okay, whatever. I only want to follow it because I just want to hear what Anna's saying. I'm documenting it. I'm writing things and, you know, using, and then I can ask her about stuff on the show. And because the, the only way we're going to get relief, and she says very beautifully, and I clipped it from your, I, I like that you, you should be publishing it on Rumble. I don't know why it's a secret. It should just be published oh, on Rumble. It is, it is on, it is on Rumble, oh, but we okay. do it based on, there's a mop and bucket channel. Mm. So if you follow, if you follow the channel, you should get it. There's no, there's no videos on the channel. Like if I follow it, there's, it doesn't show any videos. Uh oh. <laughs> I mean, if I, if I, I, I was able to see the video you sent me, like the link worked uh huh, and I was able to watch it, but if I was to try to go find it, I'm not going to ever find it. Okay. Well, yeah, I made it not searchable. Um, well, because of who was asking for, I, I forget who it was that was like, it, you know, it's supposed to be for coordinators or people who are coordinating. No, it's not. Anna, like literally put it out on an article and invited anybody and everybody yeah, yeah. to show yeah. up because everybody, first of all, should just be watching it anyway. To yeah, see. They, should. they should just be learning what is a coordinator supposed to do so that when your coordinator is doing something, then A, you can find out if it's legit and B, you can also just stop bothering them when they're doing their job mm -hmm. because it's a hard job. It's a hard job. It's a thankless job. <laughs> I mean, I'm not seeking thanks. We're seeking solutions and we're seeking relief. 
And if we're, if we have to do it by ourselves because somebody else can't get it done for whatever the reasons are or whatever, we don't care. You know, all, all we're interested in is getting all the states seated and not losing our land. That's because right. Anna did her work, but in 50 years, somebody got to do it again, or we need to just be in position. And if that's not the case, then you are going to get usurped or whatever. So just mm-hmm. go ahead and get ready. Yeah. And, annexed. Right. Well, annexing is if anyone in the Republic is doing that. You well, but it could happen. It could happen. Um, you know, it can happen to states. It appears that it can happen to counties. What so, I mean is that it could be France could just come and yeah. usurp. Like somebody should be watching. And I don't think they, I don't think they're really understand. They're like, Anna already fixed that. Okay. Anna fixed it. She bought us some time. Mm-hmm. She also has it set up in case anything happens to her. If she dies, then it's, you know, but there's a set amount of time. And, you know, the idea is that everybody just needs to get edgy. I'm glad you're doing that, whatever that one class is over and over again. Somebody needs to do something like that over and over again, but like, how about record it? And then tell every, you know, we just need to tell everybody, okay, did you watch all of this? Here's a test. What we need is a really good online test that we know can actually show us that they comprehended whatever it was that I'm not an education person like that. So I don't understand how to create that test, but it would be really cool for somebody to create the test that goes behind those. Did you do the uh, sign in America? I did. Yeah. That one was a, a a decent, um, at least I thought so a decent, you know, explanation about jurisdictions and it really kind of got your mind, got my mind thinking along those lines about these sort of like, you know, staying in, staying in your lane kind of a thing. And um, I think it was a little too easy to not yeah. really pay attention in the way that you should. Oh, right. <laughs> I mean, they, they make it so you can pass the test. Right. So I just mean, you're thinking more along the lines of the continental marshals test or <laughs> something well, like that, where they've got to really, um, really, really steady, you know? I, I think that we have the adults, obviously, you know, between the brainwashing and between the indoctrination and the mind control and the, all the, mm-hmm. all the variables and, and, and all of it was coming. I mean, we really aren't educated. No. Correctly, properly or whatever. Not at all. Yeah. And the only reason I, I was able to follow Anna faster once I found her was because I've already been like not operating in the orthodoxy for 15 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything I was doing was against the system to the point where they were like, okay, you're the rogue food, you know, rogue food leader for, you know, whatever. And I'm like, I'm not rogue. I'm actually right. Mm -hmm. Like they're rogue. Yeah. But but they think that I'm rogue because they think that I'm illegal and I'm like, but I'm lawful. Right. Yeah. Cause you grow, you, you're an actual, you, you have a farm. Is that right? You, you grow no. your own food. No. What do you do? No, I'm Indian. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be Indian and a farmer at the same time. <laughs> it's so funny. Like we're the biggest, we're the best slaves we're the best ones. We were just super programmed and, you know, we're, we're the, the doctors and the attorneys and the whatever, and all the stupid, whatever, all the, all the de facto, that's us. That's us. Right. You know, cause we're super extra programmed into that. I, but we, my story is a little more, is a little more com- complicated. I wrote a book about it because we actually had a child that was medically murdered. And then as, but she taught us how to, heal the body with food. And then I've just been in that realm. But, you know, if you're trying to help parents uh, remediate their children's health or their own health or whatever, then you are making claims. You are, uh, if you're going, you're going 100% against the de facto. So, you know, they're after you. So, and and then this litigious society, right? They're all going to come after me. 
So I created a food church so that I could have free speech. I wasn't doing it for taxes, even though that turned out to be a kind of a benefit thing, but it was for the fact that I could, like, if you were in my church, then, you know, I can say whatever I want to say. Mm -hmm. And you can just leave my church if you want to, mm -hmm. you know, we don't care, but you can't hold me harm. You know, like you can't hold me responsible for any chaos and confusion you create for yourself mm -hmm. just because you're irresponsible, like either take responsibility for yourself or don't, but isn't that the whole de facto way? Like, don't, don't be responsible for anything. Like somebody, somebody yeah. else is responsible. <laughs> yeah. They live in the world of, uh, avoiding liability, right? It's all about like liability avoidance, which is really a sick system because then nobody's accountable, right? They've got mm -hmm. public private partnerships and layers and layers and layers of, you know, bureaucracy. Compartmentalization. You know, it's it's yeah. a compartmentalization. Okay. So that's what's been happening, right? Mm -hmm. That has what, that's what's infiltrated our organization is this, that's the reason Anna's doing the, the classes, right? She's training the coordinators because of the compartmentalization that infiltrated and has created a bunch of division and chaos. Isn't that what pretty much happened? Well, you know, I'm not exactly sure what, what the impetus was for her to say yes, you know, but um, yeah, I've been going to these uh, uh, Sunday trainings for a while now since um, my state used to have many coordinators, right? And so one of my accountabilities wasn't to be on the trainings. So I was not on those trainings. We had somebody else that um, attended every week and then would report in about what we need to know and whatnot. And then um, <clears throat> when it was just left to, you know, just left to me, then I thought, oh boy, I better get myself involved in those Sunday trainings. Mm -hmm. And so started, you know, learning and paying attention and realizing that, gosh, I, I, I wish that Anna was teaching these mm -hmm. classes, right? Um, why, why did you feel that way? Um, well, it just felt like, you know, sometimes there were things that didn't, didn't feel right necessarily, or, you know, not putting blame on anybody, but just mm -hmm. didn't feel quite right or didn't make logical sense. Mm -hmm. And so um, I guess it was like, what, Octo late October, I think there was a, a, a particular meeting and I just said, I just wish that Anna would come on and, and, and train the coordinators, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I think that we really need that, <laughs> you know? And then, so I yeah. reached out to her and she said, yes. And I was like, sweet. Okay, great. Good. Well, so I'm glad, I'm glad you did that because we didn't know uh, how it happened, but I'm glad you did that. That's good. Thank well, you. that sounds the same way as like, I wasn't trying to do the podcast either. I was actually doing my own little thing and I was trying to help my farmers understand how they could, uh, take, you know, like own their land, how they could get their land grants. I was trying to explain to them, they need to come back to the land and soil. And, um, uh, my work has always been to reestablish the small family farm food system. Like that's it. That's amazing. And so, yeah. yeah. So I've only been focused on that. Well, they can't do that because every single thing that's in the way of them is because of this de facto crazy. Well, once I figured that out, because I've been running my food church and the reason I was able to run it the way that I did is because I would invoke my jurisdiction. Well, I did not know that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that that was what was giving me my power. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's wonderful when you know how you have your power, because then you can actually use it properly. Right. You know? And so once yeah. I learned that part, I was like, oh my God, this is so easy. But like, I was actually trying to figure out, people wanted me to do a food church conference and to do like uh, workshops to teach them how to do what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, uh, just do it be brave. You know, <laughs> obviously you can't just do that. And then I was like, what do I actually do? Like, what am I doing? You know, you start like 
writing it all out. You try, try to start creating some curriculum or something and you're putting it all together. And mm -hmm. as you're starting to like dissect the things that you've done and how you do things and, and what you do, because, you know, I've been up against the USDA and the FDA and the CDC and everybody. And why do they care that this mom is trying to sell some regenerative meat to people? Like, what is the problem? <laughs> You're the greatest threat. All you need is a Bible and a gun. And you're like the greatest threat that ever, like, <laughs> you're like the right. worst nightmare. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, honestly, oh. and like, they've invested so many hours in trying to shut me down. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dude, like one of our grocery stores in the state of North Carolina is feeding and servicing 10,000 households. Wow. I, I am not at all, even serving a hundred families. Like what is your freaking problem? Mm -hmm. But they're right on my front door. Well, what? they're not prof They're not profiting off of you. That's the issue. You're taking away their profit, right? So it's right. like, if you've broken out of their matrix system, they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're, you know, they're going to accuse you of being uh, corporate and they're going to accuse you of stepping on their toes and stealing from them. It's like almost like a form of theft in their world, which obviously is not the case. That's not the truth. The truth right. is, you know, mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to kill people. That was what they, oh, they're, that's what they're, they said. Oh, probably. I mean, you know, I'm going to, there are people are going to die because they're going to get sick, you know, and I'm going to make them sick and it's all my fault. And mm -hmm. I was like, Oh my God, like you guys are crazy. Okay. And <laughs> so anyway, um, it, it was in the process of that, that I was like, okay, but you know, our little operation, whatever it is, it puts enough pressure that we went from not having any organic feed in our state to having an organic feed, wow. you know, a whole place now, you know, we, so it, there's small things that are happening. Homesteads are coming up. There's people that are putting pressure, people mm -hmm. that are asking questions, and you know, this is happening because it turned from grassed meat to whatever this regenerative movement. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so now it's a whole different thing. And of course they keep changing the, the names because, you know, they patent the names or whatever they do. That's and, they do. and I'm like, okay, um, whatever it is that is aligned with the universe, we operate under natural law. <laughs> then I met Anna. I was like, oh, Praise the Lord, because I'm exhausted with these, making up these new, one more word, one more word, you know, right. and so I was like, good grief. So <laughs> now, now it's so brilliant that we can just do this. So I told Anna, I go, I just want everybody to learn how to do this, get the, all the farmers, anybody who is a land owner back home. And then everybody else can figure it out. Like after that, you know, if we just get the main food producers to get our food secured, because mm -hmm. really that's what we need to do anyway. You know, absolutely. Are you connected with, um, now you mentioned like local farmers, are you connected with, um, farmers all over the country? How do, is there like a network of farmers or how does that work? Uh, we do not have farmers in North in America. Like oh, not sorry. really. Is that one of those de facto terms? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, um, what it is, is that there are homesteaders and I'll describe the difference. Okay. So there's homesteaders okay. and then there's farmers and then there's, um, agriculture. Okay. Is it about Cor scale? Like, like corporate about ag? Yeah. It's corporate okay. agriculture. Mm -hmm. So corporate agriculture is literally just poison. It's, it's 100% poison. It's all the plants monocropped, which is never going to, it doesn't work. All It doesn't regenerate the soil. It doesn't provide actual nourishment, you know, and it is ruining the landscape around the world. Mm -hmm. It is what decertifies. It is the reason why Egypt went from being a jungle to a desert. And then they oh, decertified man. Israel and Israelis know and then they ruined Florida, like they collapsed the, the citrus industry and they've, I don't know, they've raped California 15 ways. So oh, like, yeah. oh, I mean, yeah. the reason that you have fires is because their husbandry is not on, on top of, they are not performing the correct husbandry. Yeah, it's no. not anything and else. They, and, and they, they know divert how the to, water. They divert well, the water and they send it out to the ocean. 
they, they don't understand that they don't have to do any of that if they would just run animals on the land. They have to regenerate the land using livestock, period. Mm. Full stop. You must have beef. Full stop. Buffalo. If you don't, then you are going to die because you won't have water. You cannot have and preserve water if you don't have migration of these large animals. Wow. You know what? You should be teaching about that. That's well, important. Like, so I, I didn't Al- that. <laughs> Alan Savory... Alan Savory spent his whole life teaching that. Wait, Alan, is it like S-A-V-O-R-Y? Uh-huh. Alan Savory, he's now like 90. He's one of my mentors and I read his books and I've known him and I've talked to him and I've met with him and he's South African. He lives in Florida now. He's fully retired. Um, Michigan State University decided to take his work and create the Savory Institute. Now it's lies and bullshit. So you can't really like all his work has been like manipulated, but the good news is that when Alan speaks, which they don't like him to speak, they don't like to put him in front of everybody. Then he speaks the truth. And so, you know, I've met him, we've talked, he's been on, like I'm partnered with the Solitans in Virginia and he's, he's spoken, you know, he, they all know, everybody knows each other. It's not that big of a, like just all of us, how we all can talk to each other. Like they can too. Right. So it's not. Like we've all talked to each other and we all kind of know. So like Joel Solitan is one of my mentors and they're our business partners. His son, Daniel and I are partnered, but um, they're in Virginia and Polyface. Joel is like one of the, he's probably at this point, he's uh, I guess the father of regenerative agriculture because he's alive and knows it. And then there's like Gabe Brown and there's a few others. Um, but they were on, they're standing on the shoulders of a lot of other people. So it's not mm-hmm. something that it's something new. It's not something I just made up or whatever, but these people have been teaching it forever. Mm-hmm. And so like, wow, I've never even heard their names before. So Alan was the only, only one he, all he cared about was regenerative, at, like regenerating the soil. And he knows how livestock can convert deserts into jungles. That is what he knows. And so his projects are all over the globe, but he focuses on the most heavily decertified areas, you know, like Africa is fully browned and Mm -hmm. Australia is browning and North, I mean, North America is browning, you know, after the Dust Bowl and all this other crazy nonsense that these people have done. So we just all are going to keep pushing the needle. So when I found out about our, about our North Carolina, American state national group, then the first thing I said to Dominic was, what are you going to do about the food? Um, because nobody cares about coming back to America or the land and soil or whatever, if they're going to be dead. Right. And these crazy people are literally like, we have the largest CAFOs in the world in North Carolina. What's a and CAFO? CAFO, C-A-F-O, a confined animal feeding oh. operation. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. So the largest CAFOs are right here mm. and, um, and they're owned by China, you know, and Biden and all of these people, whatever, you know, it's the ma the mafia. What does she call them? The K, whatever they are, mafia, cause they're in whatever. They are. Yeah. It's those guys. I mean, cause they're the ones who own China, who run their money through there and then bought all this stuff, you know, just like they own all of the West coast ports And, you know, they own all of this stuff, right? Yeah. And so the first thing I told him, I said, the first thing we want to do is get our courts stood up and throw them out of our state. Number one, step one. (laughs) I said, and we need to empower our producers because we were an agricultural state. But it used to be like real agriculture, like what we're calling, what you want to call organic or whatever you want to call it. Like call it anything, but I'm saying we were operating naturally as intended by nature pre, you know, 1940, 1950, but we can go back to 19, between 1905 and 1915, that was when all these systems were centralized. It was when Rockefeller and Carnegie wrote the Flexner report, which they recorded with Congress and said, 
Hey, anybody who is practicing medicine, acknowledging the body has energy should not be funded by Congress. What? Okay. And then that of course went on to rape and pillage every, every system, right? The medical mm-hmm. system, the school system, the food system, the, yeah. everything. So it made sense. I knew about all of this other stuff. I had no idea about this piece, the government piece. Now I've been, by the way, watching that whole lunchbox thing that she told us to watch. The oh yeah. Part. About oh, the my. old world. Oh my God. Now yeah, I'm MLB. just like, yeah. I mean, when I'm watching that, I'm like, oh, we are so stupid. Yeah, we are. We, like we really believe this crap. Like, you know, I've been all over India. I've been to the Taj Mahal and to the Lotus Temple and all. And I'm, my one of my cousins is an architect and and he we went to the lotus temple and he's telling me about how each of the you know walls is both convex and concave at the same time and how it's incredible and blah 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 and we're just like wow i mean i was 19 granted when i did that with him and so you know i'm 19 like okay this is awesome yeah okay and also i don't don't really care i'm not thinking to myself like why do we not know how to do this at all? Like there's nothing else going on anywhere else in the world. Like, you know, you, we're we're not, we're not putting all that together. Yeah. Did you ask him, how come you don't build stuff like this? (laughs) Right. I mean, now I'm gonna like, I, I mean, now I want to say to him, you were studying all this stuff, you know, and you were taking me to all these places. Why have you never built anything? Yeah. Well, and the other thing too, was mind blown is about all the, you know, the height and the yes. dimensions of all of these buildings and this mud flood and yes. how these buildings are virtually indestructible and right. uh, all the stonework and the incredible detail. What I'm about like, the bear? What about all the buried pyramids? Okay. So this is funny. We went with the kids cause we homeschool and everything. We took them um, to Fort McHenry which is where mm-hmm. you, you know, they wrote the declaration of independence and they did all this stuff. That's, I mean, it's super historical. You get there and you're like, this place is like so small, like what kind of army was this, you know? <laughs> and, and also it's kind of buried under grass and soil. And I'm like, after watching the lunch break thing, I'm like, Oh my God, I bet you this is a whole pyramid, like a whole nother thing is underneath here. And they're only letting us see a little bit of it because it makes absolutely no sense. Like, how are you fighting a war with this? Like, even when you go to the Alamo, have you been to the Alamo? No. Girl, if you ever go to the Alamo, like my mall over here, our mall is bigger than the Alamo. (laughs) And so I'm like, you know. How are they fighting? Like they're <laughs> defending Texas from this thing that looks like a preschool building. Oh, that, yeah. You're just like, are you, are you, for, are you sure? Like, this is it. Like, this is it. Yeah. It can't be this. It's gotta be something else. Yeah, no, they've socially engineered um, generations of people um, The you know, they call it dumbing down and it's, it's that right. way. Absolutely. A hundred percent true. They've, they've done like the look over here strategy for long enough that we have generations of people like you and I that were absolutely clueless. And so, right. you know, here we are waking up, w- w- woken up, awakened, um, Something snapped out of it. (laughs) Yeah. Well, well, when you come out of it, like we got out of it, you know, 15 years ago because we lost a a child and we're just like, I I mean, I just started teaching all this stuff, but like, we're like I said, I was coming from this one path. And, but anyway, when I walked into this, I felt like, okay, there's nothing, there's nobody holding this together. There's nobody that you can have like an because I operate on nothing but the truth. Okay. Mm-hmm. After, after everything that's been, that happened to our daughter, everything that we went through, I'm going to tell you something. I do not operate in my opinion anymore. I don't have an opinion about anybody. I don't judge anybody. I don't really care. Okay. I didn't, we didn't care about trying to live or anything really, but, um, you know, we had two surviving children. So like, you're wanting to make like the best thing. You want to make the best decisions and you don't want them to fall into the trap of these murderers. Right. You know? And so, so when all, as all this is happening, you know, to me, it's very important that we walk in truth. And then here they are now rapidly like, you know, Oh, you can be a boy. You can be a girl. You can be a, this, you could be a, that. Oh, Oh, morality is relative. 
Um, no, it's not. No, no it's not. It is 100% objective. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it aligns with the truth and the lies yeah. align with immorality and every single, and I will never shut up. I will not shut up. So just so you know, that's, that's where I'm coming from. And good. <laughs> and, and so when I, so when I did my, I did a dissolving illusion series because I've never actually had time to do a podcast because I was, um, I've always been involved with everything that's going on with farms mm -hmm. and working on my mission, right? The small mm -hmm. family farm. Well, I can't do that if I don't bring it back to the land and soil. So I did the dissolving illusions thing. And at the end of it, I, the last day of it, I interviewed Anna. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I was even going to be able to get her to even do the interview. Right. So we do the interview and she's like, this is great. La la la. We should do this all the time. I'm like, I said, well, I wanted to try to do this every week, but you know, I know that you're so busy and blah, blah, blah and whatever. And she's just like, oh my God, let's do it. And I was like, what? That's and awesome. We were just like, I was like, I really wasn't even serious because, you know, I don't even do my own podcast right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then I thought, this is what I have to do because this is how we're going to help actually get the farm set up. Like, this is the way I need to do it. Mm -hmm. And I told, so then I said to her, I said, okay, first you need to know that this is my agenda. And I told her, I said, this is what, this is what I have to get out of it. Like mm -hmm. we need to be able to get all the farms to be able to protect their land, you know, and mineral rights and yeah. own it and not have to have taxes and blah, blah, blah. And I'm not going to go to them and talk to them about this until I can give them money. Like I want to give them an order of here's a menu of what we need for our state. Who's going to produce these things. And here's how much we're going to pay you. And you have to do it this way so that it's real. Because we're not going to, why would we support the de facto poison food system? No, we wouldn't. Okay. Well, no. if, if we're no. going to, if we're going to correct the food system, then we need to legit do that. So that means you have to run livestock. This whole vegetarian vegan agenda needs to be in the trash. And yeah, that's coming from an Indian woman who is medically like been damaged from all the vegetarianism. And by the way, did you know that the Hindu uh, deities like Krishna and Ram and all of they they were shepherds. Oh wow! They, were, they weren't gardeners. They weren't no gangster gardeners. Okay, <laughs> so like Krishanji had, he used to raise buffalo. That means he ate buffalo. He wasn't a vegetarian. Mm -hmm. You don't raise livestock and eat vegetables. Okay. That is not what works. That's not what happens. <laughs> Jesus had lamb. He was a shepherd. I mean, yes, he was a carpenter, but everybody was, was raising their own food or else that I mean, that's how you had to do it. So he was a shepherd. He was not a gain. He was not a gardener. He wasn't teaching anybody how to grow gardens. He wasn't. Yeah. And, and the same thing for every, if you look at every religious, you know, holy, whatever, they were all, nobody was a gardener, like not a single one of them. I started actually studying it like this lunch guy. And you know how you go to the building and it's always 1800. It's always blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's always a fire. Every time I would do that with the religions, it was the same crap. I was like, oh my God, this is weird. Because I had to help convince a lot of people that you need to eat meat or you're going to die because you're like completely anemic, you're malnourished, all these things, you know. And they were just like, you can't say that. Like, you know, um, wheat is holy. And I'm like, no, it's not mana. If you, if you think that that's mana, so is everything. I mean, so is anything. Because well, you like, know who else teaches about um, meat and uh, you mentioned buffalo and stuff. Um, I, I'm like, is it buffalo? So uh, Dr. Wolfson, you probably know all about Dr. Wolfson. Mm -mm, um, I don't know him. Oh yeah. He's, That's been interesting. The, he's been on the eat meat. He and his wife, actually, they're both, uh, they both are chiropractors, mm -hmm. but they teach. Which people. Wolfson? Wolfson what? What's his name? Oh, what is his, you know what? Let me just check. I, okay. I yeah. Think it's Jack. I think it's Jack Wolfson. Jack 
Wolfs and yeah, well, I was all about regenerative me. And then, then of course, I mean, you know, I wasn't really trying to be like all carnivore or whatever, but that is what it is. And also, I mean, at this point, so this is the other thing, like Sean Baker and I talk because he started, he's the one who actually came up with, I guess, the popularized, whatever, you know, carnivore diet. And Wait, who, um, was, who was it? Sean Wilson? Sean Baker. Sean Baker. Where did Dr. I get Wilson? Sean Baker. I don't know. Why is it okay. say, oh, wait, I'm trying to get your. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, funny that he's a cardiologist too. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. And Dr. Oh. Heather, Dr. Heather, I got to hear her speak in, um, out oh. in, uh, Scottsdale. Dr. Month. Heather who? Wolfson. Oh, his, his, his wife. His. Oh, okay. Well, um, I, I would be telling you to listen to somebody. I don't know this guy, but I'll, I'll check him out. Check out um, Dr. Okay. So my friends are like Dr. Chafee, um, Dr. Anthony Chafee, um, Ken, Ken Berry. He's over here in Tennessee. Oh, whoa. Oops. Um, I was going to just share his channel with you. Yeah, you can. Um, and, uh, Ken, he speaks with, uh, well, we're friends. He's in Tennessee and, um, he wrote a book called lies. My doctor told me. Oh, right. I've actually heard of that. Um, I haven't, I haven't checked it out, but I have heard of it. Yeah. So, so he feels like he has, like he completely was not honoring his oath. Like he was murdering people because he was vaccinating them and doing all this stuff. And he feels person he feels a, a weight from that. Mm-hmm. And so he has dedicated his whole career now. And, um, and he, he, it, he made it his mission to grow well, with the encouragement of his wife to like go whatever crazy on YouTube. He's got millions of followers. I can wants to learn about Anna's work. So okay. we're trying to, I'm trying to, I told, um, Paul, I want him next time we go to Tennessee. Cause we, we, we meet in Tennessee twice a year for this self-reliance festival. And I told him that I really want him to come with me because all these people come there from all over, from Hawaii, from Texas, from everywhere. And this last time Dominic and I went, um, and he and I did part of my dissolving illusion series because I've been always going there as a rogue food leader. And, mm-hmm. you know, I've been talking about my mission, the food and the blah, 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 and the whatever. And now it only really makes sense for me to say, okay, everybody, if you want to learn about how to do what I'm doing, like people have wanted me to do a food church workshop. Well, I haven't done it because I can't just tell you to just go do it and be brave. Like, you know, I need to tell you how to do it. And so, <laughs> yeah, some of us kill house plants, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> how do we do that? <laughs> Right. I was like, so I need to be able to tell you something substantial. And so, you know, we had a round table discussion because they couldn't understand like, what could I be possibly trying to explain to them about this? And Mm -hmm. for them to hear that, you know, we were usurped and our government is not our government and blah, blah, blah. We are the government. We still have our power, but we just haven't shown up and you can actually invoke that power and, you know, surprise. And, you know, cause I was telling them, I said, I was trying to figure out like, what was I doing? That was so incredible that they would come try to shut me down. And I would be like, no, no, thank you. And you're outside of your jurisdiction. And also I'm shaking in my boots. Cause I don't know if they're going to believe me or not or whatever, you know, but now that I understand, I thought it was some other jurisdiction. I didn't understand the land, air, water part, you know? Mm-hmm. And so when, she, when, when, of course I know that now, now I'm just like, oh my God, I can take this 500 ways. Cause now I know exactly how to proficiently say anything, whatever I have to say, but I was doing it already. And they told me, I mean, Anna was like, that's brilliant. They told me that I was a self-proclaimed governing body. And I was <laughs> like, like- that's right. Thank you. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I was like, okay, you know, um, I'm just a mom and we just don't want to eat crap. Okay. Like we want to mm-hmm. eat real food from farmers that we know, and we don't need you to be in the middle of that. So bye. Like, are they still harassing you or have they, left oh, you alone? they, they 
I mean, they could come by at any time. Like they show up, they're always coming by wanting to make sure, wanting me not to be there. You know what I mean? Like if I travel to go speak or do whatever and they're, I can't, I can't like let somebody just run the shop. Oh, wow. Yeah. Everybody's wow. like, you know, you don't have any help. I'm like, okay, I know that you think this is just a grocery store, but, <laughs> but, uh, you know, they don't want anyone to be able to buy raw milk. They literally would come in. They they're dying to come in. If I let them in, then I've contracted with them. Right. So then, right, right. They'll, then they'll just take everything. Cause that's what they do to other people. Right. That's right. That reminds me of what they, what was happening with, um, Tony Roman in Southern California, down in Orange County at his, uh, Basilico's restaurant. Um, and you know, I don't know how many lawsuits from state of California, County of Orange, you know, whatever the mm. city Huntington beach, I think it is. Um, but he was, he just stood firm and he was like, he would, he would meet them at the door yeah. and be like, you're not coming in. Oh Yeah. So my door is locked. We have a ring doorbell and mm -hmm. we have a membership. So everybody assumes it's a PMA. And I'm like, no, I just keep my door locked because you should just know how to behave. You know? Mm -hmm. So I interview people and I explain to them what we're doing, but there's more to it. Like for regenerative meat, that's a whole, I could talk to you that, about that for like hours, but like the long and the short of it is you've never paid for food ever. You've only ever paid for distribution when it comes to the stores and all the farmers, all the actual real producers are held, uh, enslaved. Uh, I mean, we're enslaved in this way, but they're enslaved actually with loans on loans on loan, like millions and millions of dollars. They've never been paid ever. They've never yeah. been paid for the food. So when people are like, uh, why would I pay you this much for a hamburger when I can go to the grocery store and get it? I'm like, cause you're not paying anybody. You're never paid their farmer ever. You have never paid for the food because yeah, and it's, a, it's actually really, really, a, a, it's a bummer. My, um, on, you know, my parents moved here in the sixties, mm. but they came from Canada. Mm. I've got, I still have relatives there and they, there's a whole on my mom's side, all of these farms and family farms dairy farms and they grew corn they had mm -hmm. maple syrup all kinds of stuff right that's and very like, valuable land you know oh yeah and mm -hmm. they would of course hunker down in the winter and all of that but they mm -hmm. unfortunately there are no more family farms left because of the encroachment of um mm -hmm. at the time I, I believe it was monsanto um, coming in and regulating all these farms and it made it, it virtually impossible. They kept having to, you know, um, put liens against the farms just mm -hmm. to stay compliant mm -hmm. with all the new stuff they were required to do to the animals, to the soil, mm -hmm. to the, which were suggestions. The regulations are suggestions, but if you want to do business in the centralized system, then you have to meet, you know, this, uh, and so I tell, I tell everybody, this is the parallel counter economic strategy. And so it is for us to put pressure on them because we're not supporting them at all. 100%. We aren't, we don't, we do not comply. We do not comply. We do not comply. If mm -hmm. you want, if you want protection from this de facto government, then go to the grocery store. And if you want to get real food, you can come here and be 100% responsible for yourself. And if you misbehave, I will close your account. And if I close your account, you will never eat here again. And I will blast your name out to everybody in North Carolina and <laughs> let them know who you are so that they understand that you do not respect real food. And then it, they are taking a risk and doing business with you because the only thing you have is your word. Mm -hmm. And your word is a lie. So I want them to know who you are. And, and when I started putting people on blast, because I've only ever had to put like four people on blast. And because most people were just like, oh my God, are you serious? I was like, I will totally 100% put your name on blast. I will not hesitate. What, what did they do? That was, um, such, that was such an offense that warranted that. Like, did they lie, cheat, steal? Like, um, they, they, they come in and they're like, um, very like, I'll tell you like one lady, she would every single week complain about her milk and her eggs. Mm. 
she would never pick up on time. She would never do whatever. She would want me to hold it. And I did. I used to hold stuff for her. And I, I don't hold anything for anybody anymore. But at that time I did. And, and our eggs are good for a year. If you get fresh eggs out of a chicken, they're good in your fridge for up to a year. If you don't wow. bleach them and do all the things to them. Yeah. They're 100% fine. If you keep them refrigerated properly, dirty, like don't wash them. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. If you take them straight out of the chicken nest and put them in the fridge, they'll last for up to a year. I mean, you're not going to keep them for a year, but like right, right. They, they will last up to a year. We eat them within, you know, weeks, months, because you just rotate food. But, but anyway, um, I don't, by the way, sell eggs that are a year old either, but they, right. I, I teach people they should rotate eggs, you know, <laughs> um, anyway, but the milk is raw and I'm like, okay, if you can't come here every three weeks and then want us to replace the milk from three weeks ago, because you didn't pick it up for three weeks. Right. You know? Yeah, the milk is going to not last quite I'm as like, long. It'll go sour. Right. I'm like, yeah, we're not going to do that. And she's just like, well, you have to do that. No, we don't have to do anything. Also, no. Also, no, we're not doing it. Mm -hmm. And so she was treating us like we were Harris Teeter or whatever your grocery store is. And I was like, um, no, that's not how this works. So then she called a credit card company and she stopped all her payments. So basically she stole food from the farmers, right? Wow. And that was why I closed her account and I put her on blast. And then I told everybody, this is what I am going to do to you if you ever do this. Because this is 100% wrong. If you don't like what we're doing, if you don't agree with what we are doing, just go away. Like yeah, go no, do something. No one's, no one's forcing them to stay, right? Right. Like go do business somewhere else. We don't need you here. So... That's how I operate with everything. Like, I don't understand. I have a zero tolerance for lies. Like, why are you lying? Just, mm -hmm. no, there wasn't another fire. Right. right. <laughs> there wasn't, you can't burn stone. No, I'm just, I, I, lo I love that guy. He's so funny. I wanted to, I wanted to ask you if you wanted to uh, join us on the uh, Telegram channel. Me and Cynthia want to start, we want to do everything to get everybody in a race to get their four pillars up. And mm. we want to make it fun and we want to share information and everybody can use it, but we want them to understand we will not entertain any de facto conversation. We don't want to talk about your curlers. We don't care about your, you know, you know, the, whatever's happening with your kids. We don't care about your grandma. You know, this is, all, you know. <laughs> We don't care like, about your, yeah, we don't care yeah. about your boyfriend and your fight with your husband and whatever else. We're literally, did, are the four pillars up? Oh, they're not? Okay, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, that's all. We want people to bring their questions casually. And because, because every, we want to grow our assembly. So we have all these new people. They mm -hmm. come in already, you know, like I got a guy right now, he's gung ho and he's all excited and Dom's on vacation and everybody's like trying to get their breaks in or whatever. And he's just like, okay, am I supposed to like file like all these notices and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, stand down, chill, relax. And he's like, stand down. What kind of language is that? And I'm like, okay, it means calm down, like welcome home. Please just watch for the first, you know, three months, come to the meetings, listen, talk to people, hear what's going on. There's a lot happening, like welcome. Also, you just dove in at Christmas. Thank you. That's awesome. Also, there's a bunch of, vol we're just hundred percent volunteers. Mm -hmm. you know, and he's like, these people at GFG are, are not nice. And I'm like, no, right. there's just a very few of them. Yeah. And there's like thousands of you and they're serving, serving the whole globe. So have grace. It's Christmas time. Like people are just, you know, Christmas holiday, Hanukkah, whatever. I don't know what you do. Like whatever it is, it's that time. It's the time to just chill. So, you know, be nice. To which he tells me he doesn't feel very welcome and whatever, some ran or something. And I told Cynthia, I was like, okay, I'm not talking to this guy right now because he's, he's very sensitive. He's very upset about everything. And it's the reason why I would like to be able to hand him 
a plethora of videos and just be like, here, boom. Yeah. <laughs> you could send them the one I dropped into the chat. Uh, it's called, mm -hmm. yay, I'm on the land. Now what? You know, and it teaches them about the four pillars and it teaches about, you know, easy notices you could do like your declaration of political status and who to send it to. And, okay. um, well, our state does some of that. Okay, good. So yeah. like they're the only, you know, I guess we have to just go in there. Some of the things our states d did for him. So like, I guess I got to listen to what you say just to make sure that, I mean, like let them know what it would be, what would be different. The only thing that yeah. he really needs to do is our secretary of state, Blinken mm -hmm. and the IRS notices, mm -hmm. you know, like right this red hot minute. Yeah. And the voter registration, he has to terminate uh, that. And that's part of our, that's part of him being able to record. It's part of our 928 package. You know, it's weird. California is a little funky because, and uh, that might've been part of our problem <laughs> Oh, um, because the, it wasn't part of our packet when you oh. got, you know, like when I got my status corrected in 2000. 20, when 2021, um, mm -hmm. it wasn't part of the packet. It was like one of those things I had to do when I was done. And so I did, but it wasn't. Yeah. Uh, well, you know. it wasn't part of our packet, our packet. Oh, okay. We've been through not what California has been through, but we've been through, this is our fourth coordinator mm -hmm. and he's only been on the job 11 months. Mm -hmm. And the guy before him, I didn't know him and I'm glad I didn't. I would, we wouldn't have come back to the land and soil if we didn't know about him. I think God is great. And like, if, if we, oh, yeah. if, if we were brought in around that time, we wouldn't be part of this at all because yes. he was, he was a, a joker and mm -hmm. there was just like, we don't participate in crazy. Like that's crazy. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I, I'm guessing that if, uh, you had, if you were joining the California assembly around that time, you would have thought the same thing. Uh, I can't be, I can't deal with crazy. Cause it, it got crazy. Yeah. yeah. No, any other crazy stuff we don't do. We don't do crazy. Yeah. And anytime somebody starts behaving that way, I'm just thankful that our coordinator is like, look, we're trying to get our four pillars up. Yep. So this is all, this is, this is the only thing that we're doing. Yep. So whatever you want to do. You do it on your own. We're not coming to help you. We're not going to bail you out. Don't call me. Mm -hmm. He's like, get your four pillars up. Cause we got, you know, we have like a lady, her husband's in jail. Yeah. She legit. She I mean, one. yeah, we've got people who shouldn't be that are being abused. I mean, legit, we want to help get them out, but we can't do anything if our courts aren't up. Right. No. Right. No, we, we had our, um, our, elections this summer and mm -hmm. so we've got all of our positions filled on the land which is amazing that we finally accomplished that wow what we need to do now though is focus our energy on counties and so we were originally going to follow the footprint you know the the plan of action that alaska did and do the one county model but mm -hmm. anna Anna let us know this week that no, there's no provision for that. There's no such thing as a one County. And so, um, I'm grateful that we haven't, we haven't like done any major activity that we have to now undo. Um, it was, it was dialogue at this point. And so mm -hmm. it's like, whew, she, you know, <laughs> she just saved us a whole election um, period. You know, I think that is that because didn't, wasn't there somebody there on California who had the idea that it, one state was to empower the whole nation or something? Is that what you mean? The same way, like one state could empower the nation. So one County could like empower the whole state. Is that, is that why? Yeah. Well, the way that I understood it, um, by paying attention and, and learning from what Alaska did was if you can imagine, you know, the, you know, Anna talks about the layer cake, like there's the land uh -huh. under, underneath the soil. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I, the way my brain processed what I was learning was, well, you got to have your land elections to stand up your land court, you know, and get those four pillars up with the militia commander. And we have our justice and the whole court thing. And then we also have our international and interstate business assembly chair. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. for getting those subcommittees all formed and everything. Um, so I thought, okay, we have to do that for the soil too. So oh. that we can have so that we have jurisdiction at the soil level. And oh. then once we claim it, oh. then local counties can just do this, do the same thing, stand themselves up, but 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 it's just kind of covered for everybody until mm-hmm. we're populated and competent enough to mm-hmm. um, you know, have every county stand up because some counties are very rural and have one, some counties have nobody. Yet. Yeah, Step. we don't, you can't do that. We've learned that you can't do, we're not pushing for the counties until they're all populated mm-hmm. because they're not. And we, we, we have a hundred counties and we only have 40 something being represented right now. Mm-hmm. So, but we can operate as a state. Right. So we're just going to get the state situation going. Mm-hmm. And then, and then we, once the state's set up, we can't anyway have anything to do with everybody's little county things. They're going to have to do it on their own. That's right. Well, and that's, you know, that's local. Um, right. That's that's the Republican form of government, which is when, you know, locals are really encouraged to stand themselves up, yes. stand up and not, you know, not be bullied by these corporatists, you know? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, what do you... I think that, um, I guess the big deal was that I wanted to ask you about that. I wanted, I wanted, if we're all on the calls, which I don't know what the schedules are going to be or anything like that, we could just wing it and figure it out. Like, you know, play it by ear and see what fits for everybody. Um, but I thought it would be very cool if we could at least have once a week, something where all of us are on there and we just open. So on telegram, you can just open the thing up where everybody can just start coming in. And it's just casual, casual, but organized in the sense of, you know, we respect each other and speak one at a time or whatever. But, um, but if they see all of us there and we're like, okay, just bring your questions, bring your questions. And, you know, especially the basic stuff, anything that we don't know, we'll just say, okay, bring that to the show, bring it to the podcast, bring it to the coordinator call, you know, whatever. And we'll ask, but what are you guys, you know, like, what are your questions? Welcome new people, you know, and you know, they're going to ask all the same, you know, whatever the three oh, yeah. to five things or whatever it is, <laughs> but, but it's over and over and over again. Yeah. It's the same, but you know what? It's fine. It's yeah. totally fine that people ask the same questions. They it's, need it, to it, hear it and they need yeah. to be able to have somewhere to go to ask it. And they want to be able to speak it and they don't want to have to just be trying to like search. Right. Like yeah. random. And if we're just saying, Hey, if you really want to do a good job, get involved on, in a committee on your state. If you have counties set up, get involved on your County. Yeah. Like, you know, and, and when we have a bunch of people from different States and counties across the country, everybody can share their experience, mm-hmm. you know? you guys have way more experience with a lot of stuff than we do. You have way more people. I don't even know how you would be managing thousands of people, you know? Well, the good news is, is we don't. (laughs) How many do you guys have? Well, how many we have and how many participate are two totally different things, but well, yeah, yeah. We have, you know, there's like 1500 in our database, which actually isn't really that much, you know, for California, for, for how large California is. Sure. Um, so, but we have about 15, you know, give yeah. or take, we've lost about a hundred to like, you know, they've self self removed them, their emails from our database. But so what it was closer to 1600, but still mm. up that number. I mean, we have like 5% that show up or something. Yeah. Um, I mean, but how many people are active? Well, everybody's not going to be active anyway, but like, no. Yeah. Not everybody's active. We have pretty consistently somewhere between, you know, 35 and 50 that show up to our general assembly calls every week. Oh, yeah. It's a decent turnout. We, we, well, fluctuates. every, everybody, like originally people were getting upset that, you know, everybody's doesn't come and we're like, they don't have to. (laughs) 
Yeah. It's not no, mandatory. We're a, jurisdi- we're a jurisdiction. <laughs> right. This is not mandatory. Mm-hmm. And we're like, you know, the more people that help, the faster we can get the courts up. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, they don't have to. So, you know, it's, it, yeah. it's, it's coming along, but I don't know. What do you think of my idea? Well, so if I comprehend what you're saying, you're, you're encouraging that on the telegram mm-hmm. that what coordinators who just anybody, anybody, anybody. just, you want to, um, your vision is to start up like a, a Q and a forum where people can just, mm-hmm. we can have like a weekly meetup kind of a thing where we're all on there and then questions come in and we can field those questions and deal, you know, just deal with those in real time. Right. I mean, you're working and paying attention and hosting Anna. I am too, me and Cynthia, the three of us together. If we do this, then, you know, and whatever we don't have answers for, we can find out, like say to them, we don't know. We'll find out, you know, and that's it. Nothing, nothing, nothing big, but everybody's practicing, talking to each other, you know, practicing, just being honorable with each other. Mm-hmm. And seeing that we're all just interested in, we just want to get our courts up. Right. That's all. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And and everybody from anywhere across the country can come there. Mm-hmm. And anytime they come, like we had somebody come there last time. We, we've been just opening it. We're going to do it anyway, but it would be nice to do it with everybody, you know, like people across the country. I just thought I would call you first. I was like, I think you should totally be there. And you might not always be able to do it. It's like not a mandatory thing. Yeah. But like, you know, if you jump in, even if you hang out for a little bit and we have a time difference, so I don't know how well that works for you, you know, right now we've, me and Cynthia have been do- jumping in like around eight o'clock our time. Uh, evenings or mornings? Evening. Evenings. Okay. So that, so like that turns o'clock. around five mm-hmm. o'clock your time. I don't know if yeah. that's good. Well, it would work. It just kind of depends, you know, uh, don't, don't get divorced. Okay. It sucks being a single mom <laughs> because, oh. um, because, uh, everything's you know, on you. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, but I, ha- you know, I share, we do this 50, 50 thing. And so when I have them, we have, I have things like sports and jo- you know, jockeying around and doing all of that kind of stuff. So it just kind of sure. depends. Yeah. Um, but in, in a typical, you know, in a typical sense, I should, I should be able to do it at least half the time, if not more. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you were to just pop in, we'd just be like, oh, look, Michelle's here. Great. You know, boom. And then encourage anybody around you to come. Anybody, you know, anybody you think, you know, anybody from anywhere across the country, people who are just wanting to, you know, share, to talk and share. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. I think yeah. it's great. It all happens in dialogue anyway, you know, right. We encourage people to go out and talk to their friends and family and neighbors and coworkers and tell them about the assembly. And if they can be empowered with information that fills in, you know, blanks for themselves, then why not? Yeah. Everybody has to have practice talking. That's right. (laughs) And they can't really just go out and talk to people who don't know anything about it. No. And so that's the reason we do it. Because mm-hmm. then they can just come and they could just say, well, can I ask this really stupid question? And they'll just, you know, I'm like, that's not stupid. That's fine. Yeah. There really are no stupid questions. No. Especially given how we've been, you know, trained yeah. to not be able to think for ourselves for crying out loud, you know? Yeah. I have, I, I have so much grace for people. I have so much grace for people. Yeah. I used to be a lot more impatient. I'd be like, ah, we got to hurry up and do this. Like I was in a hurry. Yeah. And so, um, I had to, I had to like stop and take a breath and go, okay, wait a minute. People have PTSD. Okay. <laughs> I don't need to, I don't need to add to their PTSD, you know? It's um, really true. It's true. Yeah. They're like, you know, wait a minute. I just found out that every single thing I was told was not true. Right. And so like, yeah, I know it's a lot. Anyway, that was all. And then I wanted to thank you for, um, like helping me get connected with the, uh, with the weekly sessions and for sending me the recording. Thank you so much for doing that. Oh yeah. You're welcome. And I've added your email address to the invite list. Okay. And so when I blast out the link for, you know, this coming Thursday night, then you'll get it automatically. So 
It should go out by Wednesday. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I'm like, I just want to be able to listen and, you know, for us to keep listening. And then every single time she talks, we learn something else anyway. So there's that, you know, but cool. Well, and I'm going to check out your channel. Yeah. It's like I said, it's the same class over and over again. And well, every good. week, you know, sometimes that, you know, you'll, you'll probably hear, uh, you don't have to listen to more than once because it's the same class, but some people come back over and over again and they're like, oh my gosh, every time I listen, I hear something new that I didn't hear last time, you know? Well, so I think like- we have to, because they, they programmed us on repeat with lies and immorality forever. Right. So, so we have to be able to have an opportunity to not listen to that. And, and the more that we talk to people that that's what me and Cynthia are saying is the more that we give them an opportunity, a channel to be able to speak. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, uh, what do you call it? Um, that matter most thing was a nightmare. It was awful. (laughs) And we don't want to have that again. And, but we want for people to, I mean, like we can post in that telegram channel, something that we share with each other. And everybody can get it and, and it's relevant because we just talked about it. And also we had to talk to each other. Also, we had to speak with each other, like, you know, with respect and honor. And if you didn't jump in the call, you didn't jump at the call. We don't care. Yeah. You know, it's not a big deal. And so they can otherwise watch the recorded thing, Mm -hmm. you know, of whatever else we're not going to, we don't record those. We just keep doing them. So people just keep talking. So almost like a, yeah, almost like a virtual hangout, I guess, kind of a thing where people get together and just chat. Yeah. And I never thought that that would be something I would ever be thinking that's a good idea, but you know, it is. And we, whenever we've done it, sometimes it'll go like an hour. Sometimes they'll go three or four hours, but you don't have to hang mm-hmm. out for the whole time. Nobody has to hang out the whole time. If right. there's some folks like really have enjoying the conversation and mm-hmm. you know, me or Cynthia can, can keep the channel open then we'll mm-hmm. do it. Sometimes I'm like family list. Cause they're all doing stuff. It's not all this. It's not often, <laughs> but, right. but when that, when that happens, then, you know, or, or yeah. we all get busy doing our own little thing and I can be sitting in another room and it's cause we're not on video or anything. We're just talking. Mm-hmm. So that's all I wanted to ask you. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Thank you for thinking of me. I think that's super cool. And I appreciate the invited a lot, a lot. Yeah. yeah. And ask anybody. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Sure. No, no, no. Uh, finish what you were saying. Cause I had a, a side topic to ask you really quick. <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead and change the subject. It's fine. Um, where in North Carolina are you? I'm in, uh, Youngsville and how, we work in Raleigh. How far is that from like the Ash Ashland area? You mean Asheville? Asheville. Yes. Asheville. Asheville the, Asheville's the mountains. So Cynthia is in Buncombe County, which is right near Asheville. And that is in the mountains, uh, near Tennessee and, okay. um, and we are in the middle. Okay. We're in the, Pied- a- we're in the Piedmont in the middle. I was, um, super active in the health freedom community, um, mm-hmm. for, you know, roughly 10 years. I mean, I'm still part of it. I'm just mm-hmm. not doing the political stuff anymore that I was doing, but, um, mm-hmm. a whole, big old group of friends bought a bunch of acreage up in Asheville and then Mm -hmm. they, you know, they all moved out there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, um, I was wondering if it, if it's anywhere near you, but it sounds like it's not that close. Okay. They're probably, they're closer to Cynthia and we actually go to Cynthia's and do events over there and we would, uh, invite them. And I might know some of them. I don't know, because I was in, you're talking about like the health freedom and like, I was part of the Vax group and yeah. um, Polly, like I actually had Polly, Tommy and all of them stayed oh, yeah. with us. They came and had dinner at my house. Oh and, my gosh. Um, yeah. We, yeah. we have crossover there. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. hosted, I hosted the Vax bus because when the Vax bus was coming uh-huh. through uh, Raleigh, then, you know, all of the people that were organized, the organizers locally 
I know, I mean, we all know each other and they were like, Neeti, we can't take them to eat anywhere else. Like you have to help <laughs> us figure the food out. And I was like, what? Like, you know, I was really like caught up in a bunch of stuff. And I was like, there's no restaurants. You can't take them to a restaurant. They're like, right. And I think they were, they, what they wanted to say was, will you cook? But they wouldn't just come right out and say that. Right. And so, I mean, I was just like, what do you want from me? Like, you know, I really was not understanding what they wanted. And then I said, and then Liza called me one more time and I'm like, Liza, what do you, I said, listen, there's nowhere to go. Just bring them to my house and I'll cook dinner. Like, I don't really understand what you want. And she's like, okay, we'll see you, blah, blah, blah. And uh, she's like, how many people can, you know? Yeah. (laughs) And I was like, oh my gosh. Okay. That's what you wanted. You just wanted me to cook. Like you could have just told me that. (laughs) And so so it was funny. That was actually the time that Polly and Dr. Suzanne Humphreys and Forrest Mm -hmm. Moretti all met each other for the first time at our, at our dinner table. Oh my gosh. They're all amazing people. Amazing people. Yep. And it was like a whole, and actually from that world, I was supposed to, or I wasn't going to, but they kept asking me to come with them January 6th. Like a lot of the local vaxxed group people here. And Mm -hmm. I said, I don't, I don't, I don't protest. Like I'm doing my protesting with the work that I'm doing. Right. Every single day. I'm, I'm not going to DC. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you really need to come. I'm like, no. I don't do that because I don't try, I'm not interested in trying to tell them how to run things. I'm just not participating. Right. You're going to, you're, you're protesting with your feet and your dollars and your, yeah. Right. I said, we have created a civil, I mean, like this is a counter economic parallel, you know, strategy. And I said, and I don't think anybody ever really understood that, Mm -hmm. you know, for the, for a long time. But I, we actually lost mm-hmm. one of the mothers from here, from Raleigh. She what do you mean killed. lost? She got a shot. She literally was killed. On and January 6th? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I didn't, I didn't. It was awful. I was just like, oh. I mean, that's why when everybody's like the Sixers, you know, they were crazy. I'm like, no, there weren't. I mean, I wasn't there. And so I don't, I do know that there was the media blackout, which was, I know that from all the moms that went and Mm -hmm. all the things that happened, but they killed a mother who was just there because her daughter was, you know, vaccine injured. Mm -hmm. And now she doesn't have a mom either. Oh my gosh. Oh, it was awful. Unbelievable. Yeah. I was like. And then, so anyway, yeah, I've been trying to get those people to come because we do, um, monthly, uh, inter, you know, like educational opportunities for people to come and learn about the mm-hmm. assembly at the food church. So I, I host a meeting. That's great that you do that. Yeah. People need to know. And I, th- I think the health freedom movement is ripe for this. And by the way, you said was, you said Liza, uh-huh. is it, Liza. is it Liza Co2? Uh-huh. Liza oh yeah, you know I know Liza. Liza. Uh-huh. I love Liza. Yeah. I mean, we're not super close, but I definitely remember her from being on the East coast somewhere. And it just, it took me a minute. Yeah. I love Liza. Yeah. yeah. Li- Liza was so funny. She's just like, she, she's the one who was the point person um, and I guess Bella was organizing it with her at that, that year. Mm-hmm. And then, um, then of course, Bella got married. So the, right. but they can't, the, the vax bus, I was supposed to babysit the vax bus the second time they came and it literally broke down 10 minutes from my house, which is why they retired it. They took it, <laughs> they, they took it like, and that was when they were with the Australia girls oh, and, right. and they came over and I mean, we picked them up from the side of the road. So we had to go pick them up. They were on their way to the house and I was supposed to babysit the bus for the week while they, you know, all went on break and they didn't want to have to drive the bus all the way back to Texas. And, um, and so they were going to park it with me and then they were going to go take a break and then fly back. Mm -hmm. Well, they couldn't even get to my house. It was awful. Mm. Poor pop. Polly was just like, this is stupid. And Jonathan, you know, my husband and Jonathan were sitting on the side of the road waiting on the tow truck guy for however long. And it was, that was a mess. 
And I didn't think they were ever going to get it back on the road again. I was surprised when they did, but yeah, they, they revived it. <laughs> they, she goes, Neethi, this bus is like, it was one of the, um, what were the floods in New Orleans from the hurricane? Um, Katrina. Kat there was part of a Katrina. It was, it was part of the Katrina, whatever mess that had been in the flood or whatever the oh, bus. Okay. And I was like, Oh Lord. That, it was salvaged from that. And then they had like fixed it up or whatever. So she was like, yeah, I said, I, I, I truly thought they would never put it back on the road because they would just make it part of the Texas museum, <laughs> you know, where they, <laughs> cause she has the land, right. Where they, right. They're doing do the, the um, I always forget what she calls it, but yeah, they're, they're building that thing outside of Austin where, you know, not far from Dell's studio and all of that. So yeah. 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 Oh, Dell Studios there now? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Just outside of Austin. Or I, I think technically it's considered Austin, but there's so many counties in yeah. Texas that it, it's yeah. easy to cross county lines. <laughs> well, the Texas. suburb the suburbs right there are right around Austin or like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it's it's kind of like when you're in LA but you're in Pasadena. Right, exactly. You know, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. I thought he was still out out west. No, no. He, he was, uh, his home burned down. Oh, mm -hmm. and so he pa packed up his family and hightailed it out to Texas. And now, I mean, like, hello, he's the communications director for Bobby's campaign and right. he's got ICANN and he's doing the high wire. And I mean, things have just like, well, they yeah. all decided to join forces. The last time I saw Polly was with Bobby Kennedy when we were, uh, at, well, when Catherine Austin Fitz came to Tennessee mm -hmm. So I was there and, um, that was interesting. Cause I was like trying to talk to Catherine and, and I asked Anna, I go, how come can't uh, Catherine doesn't know you? Yeah. She's like, she can't, she's, she's coming from such a compartmentalized background that she cannot even put her, I said, that's why she don't like me because I kept talk the way that I talk is about the jurisdictional stuff, even though I didn't understand the jurisdictional like mm -hmm. at the time it was before Anna. Right. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> and I was like, why is she like, she was all at first, like, Hey, Neethi, la, la, la. she has my book. And, you know, she's been a big supporter of my, my work and all this stuff. And it was really awesome to like, to meet her in person, you know? Mm -hmm. And then the more I would ask her about stuff, cause I was trying to talk to her about the land grabs, you know, and what right. trying to, I mean, I was, I'm telling you, I was trying to work on the land for the farmers and she was just like, uh, the more I would ask, the more I would, you know, get into this thing. Then she was just like, no. Nah. And I was like, why? And then when I talked to Anna, I was like, oh, I was really pushing like jurisdictional boundaries. And, right. um, but I don't, I wish I knew how she looked at it because she never would actually like, let me know. Well, you know what? I think that they get, you know, first of all, she's super smart. Right. Right. And right. Incredibly smart, but she got yeah. so high up in the, in the ranks in the U S you know, financial yeah. world and the, whatever it was housing and urban development or something. I forget exactly what her. Right. Was, it was, but, yeah. Yeah. But she, you know, super smart and it just butts up against all reality of like, it's either a cognitive dissonance. That's just super hard, you know, mm. or they know. And they're like, uh, uh, you're getting a little too close. <laughs> you're getting a little too close. I'm not allowed to talk about that. Right. I had one of the health freedom attorneys, um, last year. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I guess it was in like July, August, something like that, mm -hmm. who literally on an email told me never contact me again. You're a terrorist. Who said that to yeah. you? Well, I don't want to put it on blast on a recording, but it was uh, Rolf Hazelhurst. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, well, yeah. I I only know. Um, well, I just know that. Uh, oh, of course, my mind is totally blank. Like I can see, you know, you see your friend's face, and you're just like, wait, what's his name? Yeah, I respected his boundaries, and and I haven't contacted him. So, wow, he called but you a terrorist. Oh, because you were talking about Anna's work. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And I was trying to yeah. express this to the health freedom community. It was my, it was my right. world for 10 years. 
Girl, that's where I'm coming mm-hmm. from too. They cannot yeah. even hear it. Because I thought, I mean, all of the ones, and they're all worried of, like, they were all at that conference, worried about their money, worried about all the things. Um, Hello, you 100% should be on this, on this boat. Yeah. And none of them are. It's, it's, um, it's absolutely unbelievable. I try to talk to them and they are just like, they think I'm crazy nuts. So now. Yeah. Yeah. Like what happened? Oh no. Where'd you go, Michelle? Like I'm, I'm right here. <laughs> that is, I know it's really strange. I'm so like, I'm confused about that. The Whappers can't get it either. Like, I don't the know. Wh- the West End pricers. Oh, right, 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 right. Which is, I mean, they're amazing. All the, oh my God. I mean, I know so Sally, you know, this is, but, oh, well, cause you, so we work with Sally, right? Like, so. Right. Sally okay. Fallon, so, yeah. so the, after 2020, when the Weston A. Price Foundation was supposed to have their big event, it was going to actually be uh, in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Atlanta. And then uh, the Marriott sold them out because the governor was all down for it and everything, it, despite all of the, you know, pandemic crap, the Marriott pulled out at the last wow. minute they paid the fines and Dell was supposed to be speaking there and all the, they were doing a Vax presentation and blah, blah, blah. So instead, Joel Soliton hosted the Wapper thing. We did a small mini 200 people gathering on the farm. And that wow. was, that was when I met Dell and everybody there mm-hmm. because I told Dell, I said, I, you know, like Polly and them have been to the house. I said, but I've, I just didn't meet you. And I wanted to, you know, like out of the whole team, um, we were able to meet everybody between the two different trips or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I told him, I go, Polly's the, Polly's the reason I wrote my book. Polly is the reason, Polly's the reason I wrote my book. She's the reason why I tried to podcast because she's like, you need to have your own show. Uh I'm like, girl, I don't know. She said, you need to be on Food Network. I'm like, they won't let me on Food Network. <laughs> yeah, you need to create your own Food Network. <laughs> yeah. She said, you need to be on Food Network. Because, well, she's eating our food, right? She was just like, you should be cooking on Food Network. Yeah. I was like, no, they do not want me on Food Network. Yeah. But, yeah, but she is literally the reason. She's a re- She goes, just keep doing it. You're doing good. And I was like, I have no media training. And she's like, you know the truth. Just keep talking. Yeah. That's all we need is to keep banging that drum of truth because that's what it is. Yeah. And you know what? It's like people are on their own little, on their own learning journey, Mm -hmm. but it's like, sometimes, you know, they just, it just clicks. So we've got to keep repeating and repeating and breaking through that cognitive dissonance. Just like you were saying earlier that, Mm -hmm. you know, we've been, uh, pre programmed with lies and immorality. And, um, and now we've just got to break through that. And, and you know what, Mm -hmm. I'm actually really happy. There's so many people that are starting. It's like popcorn. You know, the the analogy that I like to give is that Mm -hmm. when you're making popcorn and you've got it going and like the sizzle and it's starting to sizzle and then like, you know, it popped and then it, it just keeps sizzling and sizzling and then pop, pop, you know, and then it's like, keep shaking the pan, keep shaking the pan. (laughs) You know what I mean? It just yeah. needs a little more heat. And then next thing you know, it, it just, pop, 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 pop. <laughs> yeah. And then it's just kind of, it's like that magic moment where it just, it's, it's supernatural almost. <laughs> yeah. It'll be good. I think that, uh, yeah. I, that I just think they need to feel, I think after all the things that have seemed to have happened with the assemblies that they need something like just gelling like fun and also like and that's the other thing we're on one coast and you're on the other coast that's just cool you know what I mean like I think it would be neat to see us doing something together that'd be cool yeah and by the way you know put this park this in your memory bank um Mm -hmm. so you know how uh the Mayflower compact is the it's the genesis of our form of law oh Um, I did not know that yeah, it's what? in Anna's article uh, called Your Public Duty, one of my favorite articles. Okay. And it, so the Mayflower Compact is um, the genesis of our form of law. Mm-hmm. And so I'm organizing um, a, a 
gigantic multi-state family reunion in Ooh. at the um, Faith Monument, also called the Forefathers Monument. Where's that? For 11-11-2024. Um, it, it's near Plymouth Rock. I think it's in Massachusetts. Let me just double check. <laughs> you would think I would know because I'm like, I'm going to start organizing in January. The Faith um, Monument? Uh-huh. Okay. And you think and it uh, is, it's at Plymouth Rock. Okay. It is, okay, 400th.org. And is that just a lie too? Yeah, because, you know, the whole time they had us looking at, um, you know, the Statue of Liberty, right? Um, but, but there's this monument and the, the, the whole point of the monument Mm -hmm. was a written i mean a uh struck a sculptural representation of a road map of how to get back how to get your country back if it ever gets stolen by the corporatists oh. and that's exactly what it is and so he carved it on stone in plymouth huh. so isn't that massachusetts <laughs> like where's <Plymouth? laughs> <Plymouth Rock>. um <laughs> It's, it's somewhere around here because that was the other thing that I just keep telling people. I'm like, so we didn't even have any of the Southern states in the original 13 colonies at mm -hmm. the time of Abraham Lincoln's usurpment. So you mm -hmm. can just go to the French for that because that was part of the, um, the, the, the French were the ones enslaving all the blacks in the South, not, not anybody else. Well, and that actually, I didn't know that, but that makes perfect sense to me because they uh -huh. were the ones that um, brought, you know, they gifted us the uh -huh. uh, Statue of Liberty, right? And they have this- The French. Belief. Yeah. Sicko French, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they apparently have um, this belief that there's no, there's no place for God in society, oh. <laughs> you know, like, oh, that, that God is a person, only a personal thing. It has nothing to do with, it is know, in Massachusetts, and, by the way, it is. Yeah. Well, it has everything to do with morality. I mean, I guess, I mean, well, spirituality, definitely it's, it's a universal law. Okay. So yeah. morality is not relative. It is objective. And so I did a natural law series that I did oh, on my cool. podcast because <laughs> I'm telling you, I was just doing the, I did a whole conversation about the war against meat. And then oh, of yeah. course I got super banned off of YouTube for doing that. But I love that I don't get banned for talking with Anna. I get banned for talking about the war against me. I got banned for talking about some of the natural law stuff. Okay. I was getting dings and bans and whatever, but I talked to Anna, nothing, zero. Isn't that funny? I was like, wow, Anna's calm knowledge of the truth just doesn't even trigger an algorithm anywhere. <laughs> it's like <laughs> incredible. You know, I was like, this is so fun. Yeah. It's, it's literally in Massachusetts. So you want to do this one? 11, 11. Um, yeah. Because, okay. So the Mayflower compact was, was drafted, you know, it was, it was autographed in on 11, 11, 16, 20. Oh, and so next year, you know, we missed it this year. In other words, I didn't even have the idea until interviewing the Pennsylvania assembly oh. with, um, Tammy Healy. Oh, and oh. it was like this idea of like, I wanted to share and I, and they were the first people I shared the idea with. And, um, then it was like, yeah, <laughs> let's, wow. let's do, a, um, an assembly reunion celebrating the birth of our nation you know, really, because that was the source of it. That was the place where yeah. they said, you know, we're going to, we're going to honor that without God, we, we got nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. <laughs> right. So, um, okay. Well, I'm going to, and I don't mean a religion, right. It's, I right. mean, I mean, God, I get like, it. Yes, I do. So, um, yeah, the, the impetus is that and now whether, you know, two of us show up or 10,000 of us show up. 
it really is just, um, for me, a, an outward demonstration of our commitment to res the restoration of America, because the whole point mm -hmm. of this, the whole point of this statue is that it's the guide. It's almost like the guide stones, the cornerstones of, ah. uh, the, of restoring America. If we ever got lost and we did, so let's, and we totally were lost. Yeah. It wasn't even five years. Like, we we're only five years old. We really didn't know what we we're doing. Oh my gosh. Well, but you know what we can learn from the past is yeah. um, making sure that we know what to look for, which is when these people want to get into contracts, right? Mm -hmm. well, yes. if we give them permission to use the names, et cetera. It's like, ah, uh, we may not want to do that. <laughs> so this is the reason why we want to keep practice talking mm -hmm. so that it becomes our day-to-day -day vocabulary. Mm -hmm. you know, because we read about these things, we listen to stuff, whatever, but we're not often talking about it. Yeah. So that was, that was why. Anyway, I have to go. All right. Well, this was but awesome. I'm having fun to hanging out, talking with you and meeting you. So <laughs> yeah, likewise. Thank you. Fellow, you know, awesomeness warrior out there doing everything that you can do, you know. Yeah, uh, especially with the, I, I'm. Uh, it's nice to be able to talk to you about the whole, our other past life with the, the health freedom, movement. And I'm really sad. I I want I want to get them all on board. I think that we'll be able to get them on board once we are funded and we can uh, fund the farms. Because I know that Joel will be on board. I mean, I'm not talking to him or bringing him on board. I'm bringing them all on board once we can have the funding. And then I, I want to, all I'm going to do is go and try to secure farms across the country. Cause that's awesome. all, I, that's all I was doing before. Like that is my job, my work like that. I, you know, and so that's just, all I want to focus on. I'm like, Americans shouldn't be eating all this crap. Like, I don't know. They're going to eat whatever they want anyway, but like, they should have the opportunity to have real stuff. And the only wealth of our nation is our soil. And right. you can't, you cannot preserve that without livestock, full right. stop, full stop. There's now, no can garden. Livestock, there's no can, garden going to do that. Okay. Can livestock live in every climate? I yes. mean, so like they could survive in, in the desert. Yes. Really? Livestock can convert all those things. And all of our areas that are decertified, like Nevada, we can right. do it from the outside in. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We could reverse, we can reverse all the raping of the lands. All the deserts that we have is because of the mismanagement of the land, of the livestock, of the animals. Um. You cannot have plants without animals, period, full stop. Wow. And we're not supposed to eat plants, but that's a different conversation for a different day. Wow. Yeah, I'd love to learn more about that. I I, I like eat everything, you know. <laughs> I like did it. until I got into a lot of pain and I lost a child and all this other stuff. Yeah. And then I've been, I was telling Anna, I said, I had three autoimmune conditions, so I can tell you all about it. But and then, you know, that's all I do is work with families doing that. So that's all I've been doing for 15 years. And so, I mean, and so obviously that was how I ended up dealing with the meeting Polly and all that, you know, like that's how I came yeah, about. Yeah. And so, um, but yeah, if I wasn't fighting for us to have the land, I wouldn't have found my way to this. So, well, you know, what I love is that, um, there's so many different ways that people find that this is the solution. And that is right to, for me, it's yeah. just more evidence that that's why this is the, this is the solution. The solution. <laughs> right. I know. I, that's what I, we, we were talking about that. I said, it doesn't matter if you were coming from the, you know, some people are going to get it from the banking side, like Dominic was in banking. Okay. I'm like, mm -hmm. some people are going to get it from the, he, he was in banking and he was going to go into politics after he retired. And he actually yeah. went to try to go do that. And it was like, he was like, I have been sitting already in DC in the middle of the chaos. And he's yeah. like, I already know how these people work. <laughs> oh, it's, it's an absolute, complete and total 
dog eat dog cesspool. It's like survival and that's it. And you know what? Nobody trusts anybody. There's no such thing as trust. It's all. That's why we want to bring every, that's why we want to do this talking. We need to get everybody back to understanding what it means to have grace. We need like what Anna was saying, you know, no guts, no glory. Mm -hmm. Like stop being a crybaby. like stand up. Yep. So that's what the practice is for. So I'll, can I, is it okay for me to add you to my text, my phone text? And we just like, yeah, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Because a lot of times we'll just be doing whatever and I'll just be like, Hey, can you do it tonight? Like me and Cynthia will try to figure out she's, she's gone. And I want to try to do it after, um, we record on Tuesday sometime. Mm -hmm. If, if you can, I don't know, we're walking into the holidays. So you might just be really busy. So next week. And then just on the other side of Christmas, it's kind of a wild week, but, um, after that, I've got a lot more I, I dare I say flexibility, not really, but <laughs> I mean, all, all, <laughs> all of us are going crazy, but usually what Cynthia and I'll do, we're, we're trying to figure out a couple of nights that we can do it, mm-hmm. that it would make sense. But like, obviously you're hosting Thursday night, so we don't want to do it then. Yeah. So, and Wednesdays we have our um, general assembly call. Oh, okay. So maybe we try uh, when maybe Friday, because we have yeah, our, just- our general assembly is Tuesday. Fridays would actually be the best for me. We do have our oh. law education. We're do, we've our just our elected justice is leading jury um jury training classes. Hmm. What it's like to be a juror in a common law court as opposed wow. to a juror in a de facto court, and mm-hmm. you know um, just training them about how things are so different and mm-hmm. um, everything that we do is is based on on law. It's not statutes and codes and all that mm-hmm. other stuff, right? So. Mm-hmm. It's, um, so she does that from 4 PM Pacific until usually about five 30 or six, but I don't know how late that, so that would end up being like, I mean, I don't have to stay the whole time, but I, I like to learn, mm, yeah. um, learn no, and observe. That's, um, mm-hmm. that sounds but, good. But well, after that I could hop in. You guys would probably be in progress already, but I could hop in, you know? Yeah. I mean, if you can hop in, it's very cash. It's not going to be like, you know, and we're not, it's not all recorded or anything. So I just want everybody to see that we're all working together because That's great. Yeah. Because we should be working together. Yeah. You know, yeah. There's no, there's no competition. There's only love. Yeah. You there's know? nothing to compete over. We're all finally actually equal, you know, or whatever. <laughs> or whatever. It's like, or whatever, right? We're all, but it's the truth. We all need to be working on it together. I love that you guys, I love this. I want to learn more as you get ready to to do that. We would want to help and be a part of it too. Super cool. Sounds fun. All right. Well, I hope you have a good evening. Thank you. You too. Great to meet you. Thank you for inviting me to hang out with you tonight. And Um, uh, I'm glad you could do it and it worked out and I appreciate it. And I appreciate you. Likewise. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. We'll have fun. Oh, I'm, I'm tired now. I'm sorry. That's it's, right. it's like nine o'clock here. Oh <laughs> I yeah. Like, I, I have to remember that it's totally a different time zone for you. All right. All right. <laughs> I won't keep you. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Okay.